Hey guys, and how's it going? Welcome back. Got a little bit more time to spend on the Honda TL250 1975 trials bike. Not a trails bike, a trials bike. A trials bike is a bike that's designed for rock crawling and hopping and not putting your feet down and uh, doing time trials, and that kind of thing. So, on the previous episodes, we got into getting the engine unseized and freed up which we did and then from there did a compression test compression was around 60 psi had a uh, exhaust valve that was hanging up due to corrosion we got that freed up and spun it some more with the drill got the compression up to around 100 cleaned up the carb got the carb so it would operate it needs more work but we'll get into that we got it so it would operate and then ran the bike ran the bike for I don't know, about a minute ran it through the gears seems like the gears are okay redid a compression test and the compression came up to 125 so it's decent but i also questioned the compression gauge on the last one actually somebody brought it up in the video too but uh, let me explain why i questioned the gauge setup that i am using the reason why that is the compression tester that i am running has a length of hose connected to it and then an adapter that goes to the cylinder head this is a homemade as you can see it's a air fitting from um, an air chuck for your airlines in your garage your, your air tools that's what's set up on it and there is no check valve down here so the compression leaks out through here or escapes out through here to the gauge but it has to fill the volume of this hose up and then the check valve that I'm using is on the gauge right there it's set up down below a lot of times uh, I have it in different extensions there will be a, a check valve on the very end of it so essentially because this is on there it's like adding shims to the cylinder head and you're opening this the cylinder head gap up which would lower the compression so that's kind of what this gauge is doing it's lowering the compression i would think we're probably more around one ah, 140 150 instead of 125 but either way it, it's good enough in my opinion for it to be able to run uh, we're going to run it some more after we get stuff buttoned up if we find we need to take the cylinder head off and do some work we will but i don't feel the need to do that now and i'm not one for just digging into stuff just for the sake of digging into stuff and also to get the cylinder head off you still you would more than likely have to pull the engine off to be able to clear the studs that are on here i'm not positive of that but you would probably have to take the engine out of the cradle etc etc so we're not going to go move forward with that what we are going to move forward with is uh carb kit came in for that we have a new float some other bits I have a tire that I bought at a yard sale a while ago for, it's actually a front tire for my TW200, which is a fat tire dual sport, dual sport bike. And hopefully there's, gonna, they're both 18 inch rims. Hopefully there'll be enough room to clear on the back of this bike. And we're going to use it just because I have it and we're trying to keep the cost down. So that hopefully will be remedied by this new tire we could put on there. And the tread's fairly decent too. Uh, how that'll work as a trials i'm not quite sure the rocker cover that we took off last time i was questioning wh why it didn't have a gasket on it it does not use a gasket it uses just a sealer and it kind of makes sense also when we go to take the bike apart in a little bit that'll also make more sense the gap between here and here wants to maintain a, mach a machined surface because the camshaft upper and lower encapsulation is done by that so if you had a gasket in between there it would, it would be hard to maintain the gap for the cam to ride on and this does not have cam bearings in it so it's even more particular as far as the fact that uh, it's a high high failure point on this bike one of the things that people were bringing up let's go open this up here's the uh, new carb kit got a new float so if you look at the end of say that compression test you could tell it's got the little check valve on it i don't know if we're focusing you can see it's got the little check valve on the end of it so that's what i was talking about you screw that in the spark plug hole the air would be able to flow through and not back instead the air is flowing through and it's emptying itself out every time on the compression that tester that i have on there and the reason why i'm using what's on there is because it's, it's a very small thread and i don't have one that fits it leak down test guys are talking about leak down test why didn't you use a leak down tester on it 
Well, I didn't feel I had the need to do so because I already pretty much knew the information I was dealing with. I knew the exhaust valves were not seating correctly. I knew the intake valves were having some issues also, and it needed to spin a little bit to get the numbers up. A leak down tester, essentially you take your uh, shop air and you plug into a uh, fitting something like this, and that's kind of what I use this for, and you charge the cylinder with air, and where the air is leaking out is where you have an issue with. So if the air is leaking out the exhaust valves, you will hear air hissing out the exhaust. If it's an intake valve, you hear, out, hear it leaking out the intake. If it's leaking past the rings, you would hear it out the uh, oil breather air uh, whistling out of there, and then the head gasket, you would hear it hissing around the head gasket. Again, I didn't need the, to feel the need to go and do that just because I already knew what I was dealing with and then my compression numbers came up so I did not suspect so much of an issue. In the future, if I find that it's not running right and I don't have that much power, then I would look into that and do that. But I don't um, want to do work or testing just for the sake of doing the testing. I already know what direction I'm trying to go. So that's why I did not. Uh, do a leak down test. Also, leak down test, you have to do a top dead center on the compression stroke, and uh, you need to lock the crank from wanting to turn one direction or the other. If the piston's all the way up, you put air in it. It's, it if you're not dead center, and you're never going to be dead center or top dead center, it's going to want to bring the jug back down to bottom dead center. And the reason why you want to do it at top dead center is most of the wear in the cylinder is going to be right where the compression happens and the fire happens. So it, it always is getting a blast at top dead center and it wallows out the top of the cylinder right there. If you were to look at it, it would be a very slight cone going into the top um, where all the work is happening under that compression stroke. Once it's about halfway down, there's really not much happening anymore. So you need to lock the engine in the, upper, the, the top dead center with the valves closed for that to happen. All right, enough of talking about what we did. Let's get into some work and get some stuff done. All right, so I'm gonna take this thing back apart again because I first, I need to get that sealer in there as far as uh, we're talking about the rocker cover because I just put it back together. I just wanted to test it and see how it ran. And we need to take all the components off to fix the broken pieces that are in there. Anyway, the exhaust flange is busted in the front. The carburetor needs to be redone. And I want to check and make sure that the cam chain timing is correct. What I mean by that, it's got a timing chain running up through here. I want to put a top dead center. After we get this stuff off, the cam's behind there. There'll be a mark on the gear somewhere, and there'll be a mark on the crank down below somewhere. We're just going to make sure that those are uh, did not jump time. Let's turn that to top dead center and see if we can see any marks on this. I haven't looked up what they have yet, but let's go see what we can find. I don't see anything. I, I see a break right there. And right there, I would figure probably what they're looking for is those two lines to be even with the case. Again, that's a guess on my part, but I'm going to look down below at the crank and see if I can see any marks on the crank. So those two marks on top are right where we left them. If you look, I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick it up, but you can see right in there, there's a tab coming off the outer case, which looks like an alignment point, and you see a bunch of lines down in between here. When I rock it back and forth, it seems like it fits right in between right in between the bottom two and the top two like right there Let's see where we are right there looks like we're lining up to whatever that line is right there and it looks like a line with a letter T on top of it which would mean for top dead center 
Uh, the other one might be an electrical timing mark, I'm not sure, but we're looking at that line and it has a T on it. If we line those two right up, it looks like we're pretty good as far as that is concerned. So that isn't an issue. I didn't think it would be, but I uh, wanted to check it while we had it apart. All right, so I'm going to take a few minutes and clean up this surface right here and the surface that's on top of the cylinder head, get rid of this old uh, gasket material that is on there, the Honda Bond, and we'll get those put back together. With that on there, you can see the what I'm talking about. There's no, there's no cam lobe. There's no cam uh, bearing surface that's on there. It's just pretty much machined into the head and into the rocker cover. They don't, they don't look bad. Got a couple of scratches on that one. Uh, I may spin it with a drill and just make sure we have, eh, it looks okay. I'm looking at how much oil is sitting on top. I'll bring you around. Hold on. Just want to make sure we have good oil flow to the top. And if you can see on the, the oil that is on the lobes, I think we have uh, ample that's running up there. So I just want to make sure that it wasn't running dry. And we'll go spin it up anyway. I am going to go and get rid of the oil that's in this valley that the two cams are kind of splashing, uh, two lobes are splashing in, and we'll see if that refills up. I have a feeling it probably feeds uh, underneath these two uh, races for the oil feed. I'm not positive of that. But let's uh, drain that out and we'll see if it fills back up. And get in there. looks pretty empty. Let's see how that does after we spin it for a little bit. I'm also just trying to be cautious of um, not letting that cam jump out of there. Yep. Wrong direction. Yep, so oil flow seems to be okay. That's not going to be an issue. Just wanted to double check on that also. Cleaned all the surfaces with lacquer thinner, a razor blade and then lacquer thinner. And that way. I have the cam set up so that both rockers, both um, cam lobes are facing down so they won't interfere with hitting any of the tabs on the rockers so that we're not trying to wrench down against those. I gotta lift them up, there we go. one of those cases where less is more you don't want to overdo it we get those bolts in there get them torqued down and we'll get to adjust the valves after there's torque down get a little bit of push out not terrible probably could have used a little bit less but 
I don't think that should affect any of the oil passages. That's the only thing I'm kind of concerned with uh, putting that stuff on. But the oil passage is more right about there. We didn't put any material there. You just don't want globs of the stuff going back inside. I think we should be good. So what we're going to do now is spin the engine around twice. And then crank around twice. And then that'll put the camshaft back in the same location it was with the two lobes facing down. And we'll go about adjusting the valves. So you got to turn the crankshaft around. There's one. And there's two because the camshaft turns once every time the crank turns twice. There's the four stroke. And we're just going to eyeball for that mark. Here we are at top dead center. With the valve seal. Got some play. I'm going to set them at 3,000. And probably let it go through a couple of heat cycles and we may readjust that. I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to be. Probably right around three, between two and four. Yeah, put you guys on the other side of the bench. Hopefully we can all kind of fit in there. Kind of hard to see. So I'm on one of the exhaust valves. Got a 3,000 feeler gauge under there. You can see it's got plenty of room. I still kind of click it up and down. It's probably 6,000. Again, I'm going to revisit these at some point. But for now, I do not have a wrench tiny enough to grab that. We're going to go with vice grips. Grab the top of the stud. Not much room to work in here. You know what I have? <clears throat> I have a little tiny adjustable meat that might work a little better. Let's see if you can get in there with that. Need my glasses. Let's go set that guy up to the right width. tight right now. It's pretty good. Someone may ask why did I rotate the engine. I just want to make sure everything was settled in place. Feels pretty good. I'm going to go around and do the other three the same way. I didn't put new valve cover gaskets on. There's O-rings that go on those two. I just bolted the original ones back on. Because I do know I'm going to go in there and take that and adjust it one more time. just want to go in. A little bit of oil. On some of the pivots. This is the mechanical advance. Centrifugal advance for uh, the timing, the electrical timing. Off the excess. As the camshaft spins, these weights fly out. If you can see the cam in the center here, how it is moving forward, what that does is it opens the points a little bit earlier and allows the the uh, spark the fire in the cylinder a little bit early the faster a, spill, a piston is going up and down or an engine spinning the earlier the spark has to happen because there's a delay in the fireball happening and, and producing power so when you the faster it spins you just have to have that spark happen a little bit earlier that's the whole idea behind that there's also what's called a vacuum advance on some engines this doesn't have it this is all just mechanical I'm going to put the points cover back on and go adjust the points. And we'll move on to something else. Let's see if we can adjust those points. I'm going to 
close. You want to rotate the engine to wrap max open, which is anywhere in that window. All right, we'll go right there. I'm gonna go for 16 thou. I cleaned the filler gauge with lacquer thinner. You do not want any oil in there. They are too tight. Uh, oil's the enemy of your points. We need to crack them both. Don't think so. Let's go take a little stress off of it. And there's a little cutout right there. You can put a screwdriver in and you can open and close them with that. So we're going to go a little bit more open. I know my hand's in the way, you guys. Push on them where you're not you're able to see. It's a hair tight. Loose. Yeah, that forge is just right. Sometimes it'll change when you go to tighten it, though. The only point gap is usually between 16 and 20. I'm making them 16. Yeah, that's good right there. No fluctuation in it. I'm gonna put a little bit of lube. On the cam, a little bit of lube on the cam. The pad will pick it up and it kind of transfer it. It's not even touching. So if you can uh, manipulate that a little, so that pad will pick up some of the lube, and then just over time, it'll keep it from wearing the tab down on the points. So a little bit on there, but we don't want so much. We're such flinging material around, and we start getting it up where the points are. this. I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of the cam. We'll let that just kind of goo its way around with the it's already on there. Let's go backwards first. Sometimes you hear an engine running, you hear chirping. That'd be, it's the chirping of the you know, tab running on there. That's probably overkill, probably put a little bit too much on there, but we're gonna let it be. What do you wanna do now? We put this cover back on, no big deal, but let's hop onto the exhaust. It's got a busted flange on the end of it. Let's see if we can fix that. Now let's point to the other side. I, uh, you can adjust them. To rotate the point assembly, the plate that it's on, and that's the, the points timing. I believe it, more than likely it's probably done with a timing light on this. I don't think uh, a test light, rather, not a timing light. It's done static, not running. Might be able to be either way. But I'm just gonna leave it where it is for now. And when we get it up and running, you may tweak that. All right, so this guy is. So the flange pushes on these two half keepers, I'm gonna call them. And it pushes the flange against the cylinder head. And let's see if we can get this out of there. I'm gonna rotate the carb again. 
But if you notice, the flange is pretty much missing all the way around. She looks like it might be an insert. So we need to recreate a flange that goes around there in some fashion. See what we can do. So I guess what we could probably do is, you know, just cut it and find something with a flange and weld it back onto it. But I wonder if we can take maybe even these two guys. We'll clamp this on with, we'll grind it flat, get rid of that. We'll get a, a flat surface. Maybe we'll put these two on with a hose clamp and we'll flip it over. I might try to find a piece of pipe that's not these actual flanges in case I beat them up. Uh, we don't risk losing these. Grind it flat, maybe we'll heat it and we'll try just peening over the lip and then grind it flat again. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. I've never tried it before. But hey, that's the adventure, right? I threw a hose clamp on there to give me a reference all the way around. I'm gonna try flapper disking this all off right to that lip. Yes, yeah, so I don't wanna beat these guys up by using them so I, I found this piece of pipe right here or bushing I'm gonna slice it and we'll put that over the two sides of it clamp it and we'll heat it and we'll beat that lip down I think maybe when it's hot too we come over with the top once we have a flange we can kind of hammer it with this and at least it'll make it a, a flat surface going all the way around that's our our plan we'll see how well it works though yes I'm gonna go with that I got it um, Three sixteenths, between three sixteenths and a quarter of an inch. Pickle will heat this up cherry red and we'll try peening it over. And then once we get it, you know, somewhat over, we'll come back on them and see if we can tap it flat. That's the theory. Let's see if it'll work. We got it. grind it down a little <laughs> probably should have left the flange on huh whoops that flange was meant to come off of there um, if we grind that outer edge off I think we'll be fine I should slip right over there 
I'm going to cool down a little bit, get the flapper disc on it, I'll bring it right to that edge and see how we made out. I got that ground down. Cooled off and ground down. Should be able to... There we go. There's our two halves. I believe they went like that. And then that should bolt back up there. That looks pretty good, don't it? I'm going to drag a file across the top of it, make sure we get it fairly flat. There's a copper brass O-ring that collapses right here that uh, does take up some fudge room too because I'm not quite sure what angle. I think it was perfectly flat. It was hard to tell because the original one wasn't there. But I believe it was perfectly flat to the pipe. It is now. <laughs> see if we can get that old copper. Let's get over there. A little thinner screwdriver might help too. Right, so that's the old, the old crush gasket. Why does that look much smaller than the one that came in the kit? Because it is much smaller than the one that came in the kit. I wonder if VW intake manifold single port might be more to the right size. Let me go check my stash. I guess possibly the hole up there is that size. I don't know. We got this intake. That's probably going to be a little too much on the other way, too small. Let's try it. See how sloppy it is. Yeah, it moves up and down. It moves up and down about an eighth of an inch. Need something in between the two sizes. Well, I guess we're going to go and try that one. And we could probably order, try ordering another one. That means you order stuff on eBay is supposed to fit, right? Let me go try putting that pipe on. That pipe is going to be about a quarter inch shorter, but it should just slip in. I figured to slip into the muffler that much further. Put some grease on it. Help hold it. Later on when it's smoking. Gives us something to blame it on, right? Alright, so we need to move this assembly back in there again. Came out. <laughs> we didn't alter it that much, did we? <laughs> Let's get that up in the place. We need our two halves. Couple of wiggles. Well, if anything, it's a lot better than what it was, right? I think if we get the proper size donut, it should be okay. There should be enough fudge room. Fudge factor to take up in week. Oh, might be fine right now. I think next we should move on to the carb. The carb is been cleaned already, but it was in horrendous shape. So I, I got a new hardware kit for it and gaskets. Right now we're crushing that down. They're kind of a one-time use. You can get away with using them again. Some 
but they're intended for a one-time. A one-time crush, it takes up the gaps. Now push our luck. See how it is there. We need to stun it down a little bit later, or we will. But oh, I'm liking it. dirt came out of it that's just from fuel sitting up in the little bits good thing we're fixing that let's get rid of Need a wrench for that one. I got that card back on there, but I wanted to fix the air box. It's, it's flipped around the other direction right now. That goes on the other side, but there's, it's missing um, the side panel. And it's kind of an odd shape for the TL. I look, tried looking up an XL and it, the air box is totally different looking. So I think we're gonna go make one out of metal for this. And we'll probably just make an air cleaner for it too. I got some air cleaner material, but I can't get it out. So the back tire needs to come off so we can work it out of there. Back tire has to come off anyway. So let me get that out of the way. Let's get the tire out of there. 
All the brake stuff is disconnected on this end. Probably is the brass rod. Should have got the brass rod ready to tap the pin out. Might just, might just push right out of time. Yeah, yeah, sure. Probably would have been a good idea to spray that down with something. Take a minute to look at what we got. So the cover had an offset to it. Not that we probably couldn't get away with just knocking that flat. Not quite sure what the maybe the style of the air cleaner or something how it sat. I'm going to. I have uh, air cleaner foam. I'm going to cut sections of it and stack it and fill this gap up the air does not come in through here the intake is through that side so the air goes in through there through that box around a corner and in through the boot the seals half missing like somebody put silicone on it to help make the rest of it I don't know quite what we're gonna do we could probably just make a cover and maybe we can attach the gasket to the cover on the flat surface instead of trying to have something that has this funky channel. You know what I mean? We can kind of, maybe we'll get rid of this. We'll try to save it if we can, but we'll get rid of this. And we'll make the cover have the gasket. Let's see what I got for Problem is you gotta watch the foamy stuff. Sometimes gas eats. I want that off of there anyway to get it, get a good pattern. So I say we take a piece of paper and we'll take the nut off. We'll tap a hole. We'll lay the paper over it, and uh, we'll make a tracing. Cut that out and use that for what we're gonna work with. So I figure that's the outside edge, but we're going to lose some material trying to draw it out if we do decide to do that. And I won't think there was nothing wrong maybe with if we have extra. First of all, it gives us kind of fudge room. If we screw up, there's extra material there, but maybe not. Maybe we can 
roll the lip kind of around it. We'll see when we get there. I'm going to cut a piece of metal out that looks like that. I have a good tendency to make the mirror image of what I want instead of what I actually want. So. We'll mark what's what so that I do not drive the wrong way. So this needs to be taller. So I'd say we could probably, I don't know, work with that and drive the center in. Not sure if we want to go you know what we should probably do? Why don't we work like larger to smaller? So we'll work with, let's try working with that combination and then we'll reset it a little bit more. Sound a good idea? <laughs> That's what I'm going with. Let's see how it works out. See how we did on the first fit up. Yeah. Looks pretty good. I think that's uh, decent. Let's go and I'm gonna make a wooden plug, I think, for it, and then we'll we'll bolt this down and uh, tap around a piece of wood. So I think you know, actually looking at the box, it's got a straight edge on the bottom, a straight edge on top. This is the pattern with the excess now removed from it. So this is more like the actual, the actual opening kind of sort of punched down on an angle. So I think what we should do is line those two holes up. And we know this is gonna be a straight line on the bottom. We'll call it there and there. We'll stick that in the break. You guys even see that? We'll stick that in the break. We'll fold this lip in. Which way do we want to go? This is the outside. Yes, we want that lip to get folded in. So we're going to have to transfer that to the other side. We're going to want right there.
and right there. Let's let's go stick it in the bender. Did I go the right way? I did. <laughs> All right, that was probably took a little too much. It's going to make the rest of it thinner. Oh well. I definitely overshot that. Let's see. That's going to work for us. So. Ah, not too bad. There's a decent amount of material left around it. I say throw the wing nut back on it. Maybe we'll try tapping on the enclosure. I don't think we're going to beat it up too bad, are we? Yeah, if we can get it supported, we'll tap on the uh, tap on the box, and make it fit itself. And back off that edge a little. I'm gonna go around and grind off and leave about half of that and get rid of the rest of it so that we'll have a easier lift to work with. I can finish it up. Not to move as much material, you know. Standing any closer, you're gonna have to do it for me. A little lumpy here and there but not bad I think once we throw some sealer some kind of foamy whatever it doesn't rock or anything <laughs> whoops <laughs> I think it's standing proud on that but again that's what the foam is for let's go throw a coat of black paint on that we'll call that one done I'm gonna come some cut up some of this uh, filter material but the filter does not need to be that big. So I am going to cut it down one more time. To right there. And we'll make that our pattern. And we can go a little longer. Actually, we just remember to shift the hole over a little. This is on an angle over here. No reason to go all the way to that. Note to self, leave it a little tall on this end. 
And we're going to need one, two, probably three pieces. And that looks like right about there. We need to cut a chunk out in the middle yet, though. And that will be look it all the way around. You happy with that? All right, we'll make that our. What do we need? We need about. Not much on that side. No. We'll start with that. Let's see, open that up more. We need taller. A little bit more of that all the way around. Maybe not. Yeah, we'll trim that a little bit more. But we'll make two more of those. We got three of those tucked in there. Do some paint on the cover. I think once we put a little gasket material around that thing. Just fine. I'm happy with that. It would have been better if I had some flat paint, paint <laughs> flat paint instead of a shiny ever. Show less of the dents. <laughs> well, guys, I think this one's been going on pretty long, so I'm going to probably shut her down. Uh, I got some other stuff to go do. We got decent, got the engine back apart. Exhaust might be fixed. Air cleaner might be fixed. Filters are cut. And then we will jump on to taking the fender off. We got to straighten this out in the back, put a tire on it, straighten the plastic out, start putting the chain on it. Yada, yada, yada. Look into the brakes on the back, that kind of thing. And for those who are going to say you're not painting it, cleaning it up, and restoring it, I am not painting it, cleaning it up, and restoring it. I'm just cleaning it up, getting it running, and I want to ride it. Because I don't want to be afraid to have it all done, and then you, you drop it and you put a scratch in the cover or something. I'm good with that. We're just going to uh, scotch bright it down, probably shoot some oil on it, run it as it is, and have some fun with it. My light's flashing. Thanks, guys, for hanging out in the garage with me. I will see you soon on the next one. Later.